kind of like we did with our square root functions, our cubic functions, let's look at what we call a parent function, meaning that it's the original function. There's nothing added to subtract and multiply divided. It is just a plain old absolute value of x. Now, I think well, maybe we've seen this graph before. I don't know for sure. I'm just going to go from, from scratch here, okay? Um, Any time you are at a graph function, let me reiterate that you can build a table and that can help you graph the function. Okay, tables can always help, um, especially if you're being asked to do them without a calculator kind of deal. All right, so the absolute value, all the absolute value function does is it takes negative values and makes them positive, right? So if x is negative 6, then the y value is going to be positive 6, and we can graph that, we can plot that point there, negative 6, positive 6, okay, the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3, the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, the absolute value of 0 is still 0, the absolute value of 2 is 2, the absolute value of 5 is 5, and 8 is 8, Let me put those last few points on here. Now, you will notice something, okay? It looks like these points are in straight lines, and they are, okay? That is something that is a special property here of these absolute value functions. Um, the two sides of the absolute value function are straight lines, okay? Um, they meet at a sharp point here in the middle. We call that the vertex. We call it the vertex of a parabola, except in this case it is a sharp point. Um, instead of, um, you know, a quadratic function of parabola, it's kind of rounded. Um, these are two straight segments meeting at this point. Um, it is symmetrical. Okay? Absolute value functions are symmetrical. The left side, if you cut this right down the middle through the vertex, the left side is a mirror image of the right side every single time, okay? Now, I kind of on purpose did not pick up pattern there with the values that I picked for x just to show you, you know, um, there are different ways to build this. You can take negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter if you end up with same result. So let's talk about some characteristics that we are going to use when we're talking about graphing, well, what if it's not just the plain old absolute value of x? Okay, first of all, typically the normal parent function, its vertex is at the origin. Its vertex is at 0, 0. Let's talk about the slope. Now, I know this is not a linear function, but the two individual sides are lines, okay? So the left side there has a slope of negative 1, and the right side has a slope of positive 1. So I just kind of write that as plus or minus 1, okay? It's not something that you're necessarily going to be asked, but it's going to help us when we are graphing these here in a minute, okay? And just the plain old absolute value of x opens upward, okay? It opens upward. Um, those are the characteristics that we're going to use to graph other variations of this. Okay. <coughs> okay, so let's look at what happens when we add and subtract some stuff in here. Okay, we have the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 2. Okay. The minus 4 is inside the absolute value, bless you. The plus 2 is outside the absolute value. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about these transformations kind of like we did with the square root functions. Okay. That minus 4 inside the absolute value, when it's inside the function, it's the opposite. So minus 4 is actually going to move us right 4 units. And the plus 2 on the outside, when it's on the outside, it does what we expect. So that's going to move it up 2. So whereas our vertex was at the origin, now it's going to be shifted. It's going to be shifted right 4 units 
and up two units. Now that's the only other thing that's affecting this function right here. So that means the slope is not going to be affected and the absolute or the uh, the way it opens is not going to be affected. So that means that we can um, just from our vertex draw a uh, positive one a line with positive one slope on the right side and we can draw a line with a negative one slope on the left side and we have graphed this absolute value function. Now, um, another way that you can figure this out um, to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, you can take what's inside the absolute value and set it equal to zero and solve. So add four, so that's where the positive four comes from. And then you plug it in for the y-coordinate. And that's where the 2, okay, so 4 minus 4 is 0, 0 plus 2 is 2, that means that the y coordinate here is 2 of the vertex, okay. That's another way, if, if the shifting, you're not a big fan of that, that's another way to figure out where your vertex is, okay. What's inside the absolute value, set it equal to 0, that gives you the x, plug that back into the function, that will give you the y, okay. Um, again, like I said, there's nothing else going on with this function, so the slope is still positive and negative 1, and this one still opens upward. Okay. Let's look at another one. This one is the negative absolute value of x plus 1. There's a negative in front of the absolute value. And then there's a plus 5 on the outside. So we have three things that we've got to look at here. The 1 and the 5 are just like what we just did, but that negative in front is new. We'll see what that does here in a second. All right, so <clears throat> two ways of looking at it. You can either look at it as transformations, okay? X plus 1, that's going to move it left 1. Plus 5 is going to move it up 5. Okay. Or you can take what's inside the absolute value, set it equal to 0, solve for x. That's going to give you the x coordinate. Plug it back in. That's going to give you the y coordinate. Either way, you get that the vertex should be at negative 1, positive 5. And that negative in front of that absolute value right there, okay, it's going to take all your y values. When you plug in a number for x, you take the absolute value of it, you're going to get a positive number, but then there's a negative in front of it, so it's going to make it negative. So it flips this function over, okay? So that's going to flip our absolute value function over. So that means on the left side, our slope is positive one on the right side it is negative one okay so our vertex is at negative one positive five our slope is still positive negative one they're just flip-flopped okay they're on opposite sides so this one opens downward no we're not solving these we're just trying to graph them the downward part okay because of the negative in front, when I plug in it, let's say I plug in 3, okay? Say I plug in 3 for x. <clears throat> then 3 plus 1 is 4. The absolute value of 4 is 4, but there's a negative in front of it. So instead of it being 4 plus 5, now it's negative 4 plus 5. So it's going to be uh, down lower than it would have been before. So 3, 1, there's that point right there, okay? So you can still always make a table, okay? You can still always make a table, but if you understand these characteristics here, okay, it makes it a whole lot easier. All right, let me put the cell phones away. Example three, add a number.
another piece to it here. You've got the absolute value of 2x plus 6 minus 3. When there is a coefficient with the x, in this case it's 2x, you need to factor that out. Okay, you need to factor that 2 out of that expression. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite 2x plus 6 as 2 times x plus 3. And there are several reasons for that, but right now, just take my word for it, this is what you need to do. Okay? Now, there's an interesting property here with absolute values. If you're multiplying things like this, okay, the absolute value of 2 is always going to be positive 2. So we can just move that in front of the absolute value bars here. Okay? We can move that 2 in front of the absolute value bars because the, the absolute value of 2 is always going to be 2. So it really doesn't have to be inside the absolute value. So, now we can talk about this in terms of transformations and whatnot. <coughs> okay? This plus 3, okay, it's going to move us left 3. The minus 3 is going to move us down 3. And that 2 in front is going to change the slope, okay? It's going to multiply the slope by 2. Because, kind of like what we just did with the negative a second ago, when you plug in a number, you're going to add 3 to it, you're going to take the absolute value, and every single time it's going to be multiplied by 2. So all of our y values are 2 times greater than they would have been originally. So that means our vertex is at negative 3, negative 3, left 3, down 3, and then instead of going up 1, over 1 in both directions, we're going to go up 2 over 1 in both directions. So this function is going to end up steeper than our previous uh, absolute value functions. Because it has a slope of 2 instead of a slope of 1. vertex is at negative 3, negative 3, the slope is plus or minus 2, there was no negative in front so it still opens upward. Let's look at one more. Let's look at one that has a little bit of everything going on here. And we've got uh, negative 2 times the absolute value of 2x minus 3 plus 1. It's a little weird with this factoring because 2 is not a true GCF, okay? But stick with me here. Um, if we take 2 out of that, well, remember, taking out a GCF is just like dividing, all right? So that's going to factor into x minus 3 over 2. Okay, you divide by the GCF, that's how you get what you're left with. Plus 1, okay? And then, again, we can move that positive 2 in there outside of the parentheses, and it gets multiplied by the negative 2 that's already out there. So we are going to move right 3 over 2 units, 3 halves, 1.5. We're going to move up 1. Our slope is going to be 4. And it was negative, so it's going to open downward. So over to 1.5, up 1. Now I know that it's kind of difficult to count a slope of 4 from a fractional value. Okay? Um, but just go straight down 4 units from that point. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then going over 1 is going to land you halfway between the next block. 